John McKegg with Jesus Christ Trust.net. Um, so history repeats itself. And that is a true statement. Um, except for, you know, it says history. This is Karl Marx. History repeats itself first as a tragedy, second as a farce. Meaning events uh, may have tragically it had to have happened as they said where do they happen I you know my guess is inside the moon um, not here and because this is you know repeating as a loop in here so hell is uh, the moon oh, and what the earth becomes and the sun becomes earth Heaven becomes earth. Heaven, heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. <laughs> but, you know, it's like a clock. They switch places at a certain time. But now we're just talking about inside the, you know, there are three worlds. They call this place of the three worlds, right? The moon and the sun and earth. The rest are evolving. You know, we're out there evolving. The, the, the spheres. The stars are not the spheres. I mean... The stars are where someone is living in a sphere, and one of these beings of light is cast into the firmament, not one of the spheres. And they come in here, they're into a body. Just like G there's a star for Jesus, right? I'm telling you there's a star for everyone. That's it. That's here. And, you know, anyway, let's let's go through. History repeats itself. First is a tragedy. These impossible things, did they come to pass? It doesn't even matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It was the way I look at it. Oh, was there a World War One and World War Two at some point? Does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. It didn't, it didn't happen in the last billions of years. You know? It didn't. It has no relationship to now. Because it's a disconnected uh, set of images and information that uh, are made up. That really, if you think about it, people wouldn't do any of those things. Just any of them. You know what I mean? Like, whole nations invested in using rudimentary weapons, bombs and gas and bullets and stuff to just absolutely murder each other in the millions. Um, and that's accepted by society as a whole. That is a joke. That's a complete joke. That's not possible. They start on the Vietnam War and people are like, no. <laughs> so it's not possible, you see? Um, so second is a farce. And we're in the second, right? <laughs> we're in the farce. But what does this prove? Um, just the overview that, and you know, what, what this is all showing us here is that only God is real. Because... This whole thing God made up as a game to test souls it comes and goes at God's whim. Yeah, it's timed and all that, but I mean, why is it happening? Because God decided it would. And God can decide it won't. You see? And in fact, when you're outside of the sphere, the sphere that has time in it, time doesn't exist. So it has already happened in, in the view of God. When you have that consciousness, you're like, it already happened. <laughs> I already know who I am. God already knows who God is. You see? That that experience is just happening inside this bubble. Where we're experiencing this history, history repeating itself to... Uh, bring our consciousness back to God. It's separated that it's brought back our soul never separated from God we're just experiencing it as if it did and so you could call what we're living now spirit not soul most of us right we call spirit not soul you know you're you're not experiencing the over soul it's called you know like where and I'm not talking about thoughts you know, from the devil, because that's a different oversoul. That's the shadow of the oversoul. That's just exists inside this bubble. But 
God is, God is everywhere. Outside, you know, is unfathomable. And so that's the oversoul I'm talking about. You see, not the oversoul of the devil who, that's where they receive all their commands and fears and uh, what to do and so on, you know, who they are, the characters, and always the same. So, now, I don't know if you thought about it to this level, but you have to, okay? History repeats itself, meaning this is a timed event, and there are no new characters. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Nothing new under the sun. I should look that one up. But uh, there's nothing new under the sun. You see, the body that I inhabit, John, Jack, McKegg, right, is always going to be played here doing exactly what I'm doing on exactly the same day all the time. In fact, at this moment, I'm the only one that can remove myself from that law, you see, of inexorableness. Because I can see it for what it is, and I don't have to you know, play the role necessary. I have to play the role that the Holy Spirit tells me to play, which can be separate from the role that's been, you know, exactly played before. Or it can be exactly the same. The point is, it is exactly the same. Every time. It's The Beatles never come up with a new song. They always have the exact same songs. In fact... Really, you know, time starts in 1969. You don't re-record everything from Big Video. It's just here, you know? And they're like, oh, that's your singing. It's like, oh, that's me singing, okay? You know? You see, they just step into the role midway through, and like I had to, and that's the way it is. But they just don't understand that part of it. They don't see that they, every single time, it's either them or someone else play that exact role. You see? It's so difficult to think that you could be inside anybody. And it's even more difficult to understand that you have been inside everybody. Including all the animals. You know? You played an animal every single... You know, you played every single animal. Everyone has to. That's, that's evolution of the forms. And so your consciousness goes up with each form. And then eventually you hit the human form. Then you got to do all the humans here. And be like, okay, you, you know. Because uh, Bear Baba say you don't get to advance until you accept the form you're in. You, you don't think you're from a previous lifetime. You think you're from this lifetime. So that's why you know, it's so difficult when you remember previous lifetimes. You, you really have a sense that you're this character. You know what I'm saying? But you're not. And so that changes over time, but then, and then you go through all the forms and stuff like that. Think about it. The jinn, the demons, they're, they go through all the forms here, you know? There's a shadow, and, and there's the opportunity of God being in every form. At the same time, not so much, you know? Like, the shadow is inside of you until it's completely removed, and then God comes in. And, and at this point, I'm the only one that's done that in the game. Like, there are different levels of doing it, you see, but then there's the final one where you have an automatic event. Like, uh, you know, you have to die to meet with God, and that doesn't mean you have to have some physical traumatic event where your body dies. Absolutely not, you know? It's a... It's a uh, automatic spiritual event where your actions are weighed here by the by God and so you hit a tipping point and then automatically click you have to be set into a state of samadhi into a state of you know like sleep but not you know like awake sleep you're not in your body you're gone the body is just sitting there like in sleep but you're elsewhere, but you're conscious. So you're conscious of what? God. And so you're consciously experiencing that in, in the sleep state, you see? So you're bringing your full consciousness to the sleep state is the original state of God where God doesn't know itself. Doesn't know self. It's just completely fine and 
asleep, you know? And so that's why Mayor Baba said, I come to wake you up. In other words, you're still going to, you're going to need to go into the sleep state from based on your actions and meet with God. And then, you know, you'll be awakened by God, giving God's grace automatically based on your actions. And this is all pre-planned. You got to think of it, but, but we have to, you know, operate as if free will is real. You can't, you can't just, you know, go merrily, merrily down the street. You know, you have to try to get to God. You see, you have to, you have to put your oars in the water and row like a bad man or woman towards God, forsaking all else, <laughs> really, even your life, until you meet with God. How's that done? Well, you have to follow the truth and you have to find someone that's already made it and follow what they're saying, you know, accept the reality that they know and explain to you as I have, and then process that and see, you know, oh, ask God to intervene and let you know, hey, what is my role in this? You know, please tell me. And then do your best at that. And I'm happy to help those that ask for help. That's my role, you know, like, you may think something is a really good idea, but did you listen to what I said? And you might want to double check it with me, you know, like, oh, I want to do that free home thing. Did you get in touch with me? Did you follow my instructions? Did, uh, you know, you can't, we're trying to gather information. We're not doing this, you know, you got to think risk-free home, okay? Risk-free home. Don't risk anything. You see, we're, get, we're gathering information. This is didactic. This is like a scientist. Oh, uh, I'll just set up this uh, experiment over here and collect the data. That's all because the data is what people need. And so you're just collecting the data, no risk to you. Why, why risk anything? No, come on. That's silly. And it's the opposite of what I've said. So no risk until the end result is 100% known. You see, we're shooting fish in a barrel here. Houses don't move. This is going to be easy. It's just gathering information. If, if you can't understand this, the work's not for you. Move on to something else, you know? That's not your calling. People, people say that they're, that's their calling. Oh, I want to help people get a free home so that everyone's free. Oh, yeah. Can you listen? Because I've had more experience than anyone, anyone at this. So when you have an idea, you know, that's why I say the first thing I want to see is a list of what you're going to do. A list. A list. A list. And we'll check it a million times. You see? Until I know you understand everything. Do not go off half-cocked. Then you're just going to be working for them because you're going to gather information. Oh, this can't be done. Now that's wrong. It's being done now. So that's not in question. So we're just gathering the data to prove it. That's it. You see? So it's not about, oh, I did whatever. Because that's ego talking. That's not serving other people. That's the ego. Oh, that I get to blah, blah, blah. That's great that you have a strong enough sense of self that you want to do this for others. That's great. The ego must exist. So you got to carry yourself through it. But I'm just saying... You, you get caught up in this spiritual uh, flush, uh, you know, like the tide comes in. Oh, I know the truth and I want to do this. Well, I've been doing this a long time. I've known the truth for quite a while. I have more experience at this than anyone. So the point is, someone's, you know, further down the spiritual path, you go, hey, I was thinking of doing this. What's your feedback? And I give my feedback. And then you then you could process it. You see what I'm saying? Because you probably leave it some things out. You might not have thought of. Because I've done a lot of this. <coughs> and have a lot of experience. Okay? So history is repeating itself. Don't, don't waste time. We don't have time to waste. Time is ticking. Tick tock. The sand is running out. There's very little time. Every day, another day. Click, gone. And the time list's going to end. 
and you see got to get it done before it ends. You see, the sooner it gets done, patiently, right? But you got to think, the sooner it gets done, the more time people will experience freedom. You see, like true, you know, preparing themselves for Judgment Day. Oh my God, God is real. It has saved me and my family or, you know, whatever. Like that is, you know, there has to be a time when those people have to fight for, you know, their love of God and they have to fight against something, right? Up, down, on, off, right here, there, past, uh, future. This is duality. The devil is uh, God's highest servant in that it is predictable. It plays its part in this tragedy. You see over and over. And it's fine to carry on with the farce infinitely. Because apparently the devil loves God. You know, and will play this horrible role. And because, you know, it understands that's the path of every soul. That God laid out. Not us. There has to be a difficult path. You think the getting to God is worth it. And you have to, you know, you have to, in every aspect, be done with this world. See it for what it is, as this trap that is empty. Without God, life, meaning for life, existence is empty. And this empty, you know, sphere that we find ourselves in is empty. It's empty. You see, <laughs> there's nothing here. Ultimately, you know, everything is not satisfied. You eat a most perfect, ripe strawberry, and you eat it, and it doesn't matter how perfectly ripe that strawberry was and everything, later that day, you're going to be hungry again. You see? This place never satisfies. Not ever. It's not a satisfying place. Is, is satisfaction is temporary. That's not God. That's not being with God. That's permanent state of bliss. Nothing breaks it. It's un. It's impossible to explain. It's a. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's a. But it's the opposite of this. You know, you're in a state of. There's just no. You know what I mean. There's no. There's no possibility, for explaining it. You know, now we're feeling separate from God, and then. You know, winning this game, you become reconnected to God, which you never left, but you experience it that way. Oh my God, you know, I know everything, what's going on, I have power, I can stick my oar in the water and make a difference, and, uh, you know, I'm connected to the bliss of God, which is all pervasive and all encompassing. There's no, there's no aspect to God which is the opposite of any of those three you, you're you're always there's no knowledge and not knowledge in the state of God no there's just knowledge there's no power and not power in the state of God no there's just power there's no bliss and not bliss in the state of God no there's just bliss you see it's it's you're in the singularness of God you're out of duality you see but this duality is always repeating itself and the farce is that Duality is real, but it's not. It's just real in this tiny game, in this bubble, or, you know, and it's linked to the other bubbles here. Yeah. But outside of the, you know, bubbles is the ocean. So is a bubble really the ocean? You know? It is if it's inside it, I guess, you know, because it's not really anything more than an illusion to God, because God is actually the ocean, not the bubbles. Right? If God is the ocean... Sure, the bubbles are part of God, but they're the empty part. Not the full of God part. They're empty. A bubble is empty. It's empty. It's not full. A bubble's empty. <laughs> so everything is repeating itself. And I don't mean just a part of it. If you watch, if to really get a sense of this, uh, I, I, I like that HBO series, Westworld. You know, because every time, you know, everything starts exactly the same. Every time, exactly. 
you know, everyone is walking in the exact same place in the street, wearing the exact same clothes, doing the exact same thing, saying the exact same thing on the same horse and the same. Everything's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. How, you know, it seems impossible, but isn't it actually super easy if God could make up this whole thing to just turn on and off the light switch every, you know? So often it's a piece of cake. It's like, just think it's like, oh, well, I'm going to turn on lights, uh, turn them off, turn them on, turn them off. I think you put it on an automatic timer might be easier. I'll just do that. That's what's happening. You have to see it for that. You see, then, then this whole storyline becomes uh, plotless. You know what I mean? It's not the real plot. The real plot is, are you going to get to God? And the answer is yes, but how soon? And the answer is, well, how soon do you want it? How soon are you really willing to see through this whole thing and not accept it as real? And accept God as real? And then that's all you accept every day. God is real, the rest of it's a farce. It couldn't be real. It's not even slightly possible. You're in a dome. How does the air get clean every day? How do the winds blow every day? How do these these? <laughs> it's not by coincidence. In fact, how would you get a domed area to have all these different weather systems and you know, because you're in a dome, so you're like, well, let's make it wet inside the dome. You're like, no, wait, wait, you're trying to keep the water out. No, well, you need some plant. You need to water the plants every day. And, you know, I mean, it's impossible. No one could ever do this, you know, but for God, and that's why you have to see and respect and fear and, you know, you have to blame God for everything. You see, God runs everything. God is everything. You have to blame God for everything and respect that and be like, well, God, okay, well, humans couldn't do this. You see, it's not possible, but God is doing it. In fact, it's just doing it over and over. And it's like somehow just impossibly, you know, never messes up. Is always the same. How's that even? What? You know, there's a power doing that. This, this reality proves the power of God in that it's just impossible to figure out how it's happening, isn't it? So, But you see it's happening. So you know God is real. Well, who is God? The God is the one doing everything. Everything that's possible, impossible, whatever you think of it. It's all impossible unless you think God is doing it. Oh, okay. Inshallah. You know, God. God's will. God's will is what creates everything to happen. Not yours or mine. We're extension of God's will. We're God's creation. So any will we have is God's will. So, you know, it's, it's God's will that you receive thoughts at a certain time of day about something. It's, that's God's will. Those are God sent you information, you see? Obviously, you know, God's shadow is here in duality. So God's shadow is always sending you thoughts too. You're like, deny, no thanks. You take the name of God, Jesus Christ. No, no, you know, that's not, I'm not you know, those thoughts and... You know, they finally receive the thought from God. You're like, okay, that's makes sense. That's not just an animal, you know, instinctual response that someone is sending me that I don't want to hear about. Uh, the more you pray against it, the less those thoughts come. The more you take the name of God, you just get thoughts about what you're supposed to be doing as God's servant and why. That's what you get. So history repeats itself. If you can see it, then you can take yourself out of it. Oh wait, I'm not a. I'm just riding around in one of these character plots, in a body. So that's when the separation begins to occur. It's like, well, you see, you're not the actual story. You're just stuck in this player mode in this game, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, who who gets me out, and how does that happen? Because. It's fun to play a game, definitely, especially a complex game, but in the end, a game becomes boring. 
because you figure out the rules, you're like, okay, I won the game, and then it's like, what, do you want to win the game again, you know? Super Mario Brothers forever, it's like, no, well, Super Mario Brothers was cool back in the early 80s, and, you know, it was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like, and then it was like, okay, nobody plays Super Mario Brothers anymore, or if you do, you know, that's unusual, and that's fine, whatever, you're, you're doing a retro thing, and you never played it, but those people that played it are kind of like, okay, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't even play any video games. It's like, I played them as a child. Oh, but they were more simplistic. Yeah, but not really. You know? So I hear a lot from young people. Oh, we're inside the simulation. It's, yeah, well, what do you mean? Simulation, you know? It's happening. You're inside of it. you got to get out of it. It's actually you. Your consciousness is trapped here. Okay? Is it happening, repeating over and over and... I mean, what do you mean simulation? That it's not actually the real state of God? Yeah. In that sense, it's a simulation that you're not experiencing your real state of God. But is it a simulation that it's not actually happening? No, it's happening. It's happening until it's not happening to you, you see? And it's up to you to uh, get right with God to make it end happening. You see, how can you do that? You, 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 you try and process what somebody who's won the game is saying. And if you have specific questions, ask them and get the answer, you know, and then, you know, it's tough to ask me a question because I'll give you the right answer. And it may be not be what you're expecting or why is stuff like that. But, you know, you have to examine it and be like, well, because I have more information than you, you see, about the game around us. And so I'm able to answer from that level. And so... Why did you ask me, you know, if you if you don't want the information and you're not going to act on it, you see, because it's not a good idea to ask a saint information and then not act on it. It's not a good idea. And take your time and process it. I'm saying that's fine. But the people that have said he's, you know, he's nobody and just stole away work and done all this stuff. What, what's going to happen to them? Come on. You know, I, I mean, I just. Well, you think people don't die from from um, ill uh, they're ill treated me of me? I know they have. <laughs> I know for a fact they have. I can name some. I didn't touch them or anything. I'm just saying it's an automatic event in here. They have to deny, and then God has to teach them a lesson, and that's that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, history is repeating itself, but do you really see the level that it's repeating? Can you separate your consciousness out of it and say, you know, I have to do something about this. You know, I don't want to wake up in another body re with my memory wiped, having to start from fresh again, get up to this level of knowledge, and then have X amount of time left after all that work. A time, of, you know, after all that work and tragedy and get yourself worn out again from this whole thing. And then you got how much time left, you know, to try and make it out of here. Because the beginning part, it's not like making it out of here. You just try to get back up to where you were in the game. Then you got to be like, okay, what am I going to do now? From this position, having no memory. You say, you see from past events, past lifetimes. You're like, okay, what do I do now? So that's why it's important to accept, oh, I found the truth. I got 10 years left. What am I going to do? You know, where is my role in this? What can I do? You know, really ponder that with God and then act on it every day. That's all we have. History repeats itself, but you have to play the game as if you have free will. And if you just, re you know, how do you get, you have to fight for free will. You have to fight your way out of this cage and be like, I, that's all, that's what I want. You cannot limit my consciousness to repeating, repeating. That's not who I am and I do not accept it. You see? That's what it is. You've had enough. No more. This isn't me. This isn't repeating limited consciousness. It's not who I am. Let me out of here. That's it. And you can't do it by yourself. God lets you out. And those people that have gotten there already in this lifetime, they're your best way to help. God and someone who's already made it. That's it. That's what we have. The rest of them here... Are trying to teach you through experience kind of what not to do 
that you're wrong now, that you got wrong thinking, that you have to move forward or you're thinking in your action. And they push you to do that. That's how they earn their, that's their service. That's how they ultimately earn their ability to play this game as you are. You see, you have to respect everyone around you that they're playing, you know, they're, they're making a carnival happen. So you win your soul. I mean, come on and thanks, you know? Uh, and let's just make it so you, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> like, let's be done with this. Okay. Let's, let's be done. History is repeating itself. Yes. In exactly the same way. Nothing new under the sun. What are you going to do about it? You know, you have to do something. You have to act on the truth every second, every day and ask for God's help. 